Big snowstorm just hit Kansas City this week, but the real storm is yet to come, and that'll happen when Bushwhacker comes out of the bucket shoots on Pure PBR. They know pain. You gotta be kidding me. But they don't know fear. Supreme focus. They are the Cowboys. How about this ride right here? Rulers of the arena, the best in the world. Do you believe in destiny? Back-to-back -back world champion Silvano Alves has been atop the standing since the season began in search of his third straight title. By the second jump, you can tell the ride's over. But with a new season and a fresh start, the Carolina Cowboys Shane Proctor surged into the world's number one position. Shane Proctor hey! just sent a message in Southern California. We've got a new number one in the world. J.B. Mooney, no stranger in rising to the occasion, returns from another injury, eager to strike his first win in this young season. I'm going to quit worrying about points, anything like that. I'm just here to ride bulls. And after only two outs in the 2013 season, former world champion Bucking Bull Bushwhacker looks ready to reclaim the title. Missouri veteran Luke Snyder lasted just 1.98 seconds aboard him last week, giving Bushwhacker the highest marked ride of the season. He returns to the Built Ford Tough Series stage today, large and in charge. 37 straight buck -offs. Today, it's the third round of the PBR 15-15 Bucking battle, where double points are on the line for the top 15 bull riders in the world versus the top 15 bovine athletes. It's the world's most dangerous sport, where extreme is an understatement, and eight seconds can seem like an eternity. A few days ago, Mother Nature sent Kansas City into a deep freeze. But today, the world's best riders and bulls will heat up the Sprint Center. For the 11th time, the PBR has traveled to the Paris of the Plains. We bring you a roving built Ford Tough Skybox because it's time for another edition of Pure PBR, the show by the fans, for the fans, where we bring you closer to the action than ever before. And today, another first. This format in a 15-15 bucking battle. Hello, everybody. I'm Craig Hummer. Before we get to the action, let's check in with two-time PBR world champ Justin McBride and the Iron Man, J.W. Hart. Well, thanks, Craig. A question that we get asked all the time is about the terminology we use about a bull spinning into a rider's hand or away from his hand. Now, some riders prefer them into their hand, some riders prefer away. But the riders that are the most dangerous to win a world title is the guy that can ride them going either direction. Now, I've got my esteemed colleague, J.W. Hart, back here. And as he spins this mighty bucky to the Don't right. Don't let me buck y'all. <laughs> all right. I've got my right hand down. And as he moves it to the right, that's what's going to be into my hand. Now, as he switches it and goes back to the left, this is away from my hand, obviously. And this is also, after the eight seconds is up, this is a great chance for a right-hand rider to make his get off into his hand on the right side as the bull is going left. This makes the risk of a hang-up very small. It makes the bullfighter's job a lot easier, huh, Shorty? Great topic, guys, and I want to stay with it right now. I'm going to take you out here on the arena floor with Frank and, and Jesse right now. And, uh, guys, Justin and JW were just talking about bulls and, and how going away from your hand or into your hand is different. But I want to ask you first, Frank, bulls away from your hand, what are you looking for? Yeah, bulls spinning away from a guy's hand. If he kind of moves away from a guy, he'll drop him in the well, hang him up. It's hard to get the bull out of it right there, but we got to get in and get him loose. Jesse, into their hand, what are you looking for? There's no such thing as a good hang-up, but best-case scenario for us is if they hang up going away or into their hands, sorry, it's going to want to pull the guy over that outside shoulder, gives the first guy in a chance to get on the head, get a, get a space opened up, allow another guy to slide in the hole and get that hand up. Well, there you have it, guys. Even our job changes with the direction of the bull. Craig? Shorty, as you know, this dance involves a rider and a bull. These are the 15 best matchups this weekend in Kansas City. It's going to start with Jory Marcus against Shepherd Hills Tested, one of the toughest bulls on tour, and it will end with Mike Lee, the 2004 PBR World Champ, against the one and only Bushwhacker, who last weekend scored a monster 47 points. But for Marcus, this is a rematch, guys. This bull has bucked off five straight. He's bucked off Marcus twice in Oklahoma City both times earlier this year.
J-Dub, you got to credit Shepard Hill's tested right there. One direction didn't work, so he switched it up. Well, this is, this is a bull that's just now five years old, and he's starting to learn the ropes real quick. Joey Marcus had a seat on him. Going to the left, what's he do? He changes it up. That's what great bulls do at this level. When you start riding them one direction, get ready, because it's fixing to change. That is the third time that bull has bested Marcus. Jury, however, will be fired up for the rematch. That's the sixth straight buck off for Shepherd Hills tested. Now ridden only one out of 20 times, and we transition quickly to Sean Willingham, a man who already has an event we, a win, J-Dub, in Oklahoma City. He won that as an alternate. When Willingham is on, as you know, fewer better. Well, this is a guy that has a, he has a tendency to get lean back, and he knows it. It's no secret. And when he does get leaned back, making the whistle isn't very easy for him. But when he gets out over the front end of these bulls, that's when he conquers the best bulls in the business. He's rode scene of the crash. He's rode all the great ones. This is a little bullet. Bucked him off in Oklahoma City, and he did it relatively quick. Right here in the gate, he's going to have some backup. So he's got to stick that chest out and go at it. This is the bull that bucked him off in Oklahoma City when he won eight straight buck offs for Trainwreck. If you're a bull fan, you know this is the bull that wreaked havoc on J.D. Mooney multiple times. Dub, he started to drift back, and then he got into that bad position, didn't he? Right there for well, I'm going to tell you, what, when it comes around right there, it's not as bad a shape as you'd think. The bull's going into his hand. You can actually have a little get, you can get away with them leaning back a little bit when they're in your hand like this. But on this caliber of a bull, he just gets too far back. And when you get that far back, you see all the pressure, and it just pops his hand out of his rope. Had his hand stayed in that bull rope, Sean could have made the whistle. Two quick buck offs here in the 15 15 bucking battle in Kansas City. The Cowboys will have to regroup. A lot more to come on CBS. This CBS Sports hey, Spectacular, loves. the PBR 1515 Bucking Battle, is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. Follow the clash of the Cowboys to see how to win one. Super 8. Free breakfast and free internet access. Super 8. Destination Super. And by the off-road rated Kawasaki Terror. This is what this show is all about. You can tweet your questions into twitter.com slash PBR, hashtag pure PBR. Today it's, am I imagining things or does it seem like the Brazilian riders set the rope with their hands off to the side? It looks like the American riders have their hands centered. Dub, explain this for us. Well, they're not imagining things, Craig. And what I want to show you is you have to kind of on this barrel body buck, you got to imagine the backbones right down the center. With an American style bull rope, being right-handed, I'm going to use both these right-handed. Me being the right hand with the hand in the rope, this bull rope, every time the bull bucks, is want to shift down this side of the bull because it pulls on this side. So the Americans have to overcompensate by putting their pinky, or maybe even some riders, the great Jerome Davis would use even the middle finger, right on top of that bull's backbone to overcompensate for it. With the Brazilian style rope, it pulls on the opposite side. So what the Brazilians have to do is overcompensate because every time this bull bucks, this rope's wanting to shift this direction. So they move their hand off down the side. So every time that bull bucks, it pushes them up in the middle. Justin, how do you feel about it? Well, it's two totally different styles, J-Dub. I don't know, man, but I love this matchup right here. Cody Nance on Stanley Fat, uh, Fat Max. Jordan Huff, the only guy I've ever seen ride this bull, sitting here giving him pointers, so that's got to help out. This bull's bucked off Cody Nance two times, one of them this year in New York. That was a crazy start, Mac. Fat Max just wanted to go off to the races. Credit Nance for hanging on as long as he did. Well, yeah, Craig, and, and you know, J-Dub was just talking about that was an American-style rope there in the middle. Didn't work out for him. Now we're going to get to go over to Guilherme Marti and take a look at a Brazilian style. Marchie's got a rematch as well. Marchie was the last to ride the bull that's underneath him, Southpaw. And Southpaw, J-Dub, has got the whole package, doesn't he? Speed, power, and agility. Yeah, this is an outstanding bull. I was, I was actually out at the pens this morning feeding bulls, and I talked to Gene Owens about this bull. He's the son of the great lefty. Uh, been to the PBR Finals a number of times. And... Uh, he bucks a lot like his daddy. His daddy had to be on the right-hand delivery, 
and this bull's got to be on the left hand delivery, but they do the same thing, just opposite. This bull's going to jump out there, kind of move forward with a lot of forward motion, just like his daddy. It's so, it's so cool to watch him. And then he's going to go to the right. That's right into Glaramie's wheelhouse, and that's where he wants him to be. Hey, Shorty, weigh, on, weigh in on this one, excuse me, because I've read that this bull could challenge Bushwhacker and Asperit by the end of the year if he continues to perform as well as he has. Well, and I, I wouldn't argue with that, Craig. This is the bull that, that uh, like J.W. said, he's got a lot of forward movement out here and then around to the right, but when he does come to the right, he really folds up, uh, makes that tight turn. He's got a lot of whip, a lot of speed, and, and that forward movement gets the guy kind of wants him back, and then when they come and turn back that hard and that fast, he kind of pushes back underneath himself, uh, really tries to kiss his tail there, and, and that's how he folds around himself. So he, he's got a lot of speed power, and this is a great bull. I was very, very impressed with this bull uh, the, the times I've seen him, but especially the last trip I saw this bull have, I was really, really impressed with him. J-Dub, we're seeing a great illustration of Marchie's hand off to the right-hand side and the meticulous nature he's using to do his rap. Well, it's funny, Glaramie Marchie is actually, he, he gets claustrophobic. A lot of people get claustrophobic in elevators and tight spots. He gets claustrophobic with his hand being taped in, in, in a glove, and I, I, don't, I don't understand it, <laughs> but that's his story, and he, he gets nervous, gets a cold sweats when he puts that tape on time, so he wants to get out of here pretty quick. He's wired, so let's listen in for a bit. You push him on the shoulder. Push him on the shoulder. Let's go. 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 And the guys, the bull helped him out a little bit, didn't he? They started, he started to go left, but then he went into his typical pattern to the right. Yeah, but we got to hear Shorty call that right there. A really smart bull. He didn't have his, he didn't have his A game right out of there after that little slip, but then he picked it up and changed directions. Justin, you've been on his daddy. You know how his daddy bucked and, and moved forward and turned back one way and then go back the other. He's done it to you. He's done it to a lot of guys. That, how, that was a pretty resemblance there, huh? Yeah, look. Looked a lot like his dad there, and you know, that was a bull I had a lot of trouble with. And Galeramy, they're looking at the time here, seeing if maybe he made it or not. Man, that was close right there. Ty goes the runner, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that bull looked like, you know, coming around to the right, looked like he's, he was moving ahead, looked like he had pretty good control. Uh, when he went back to the left, what were you thinking? You thinking he you did know, it? He starts bad start with me. He kind of fall a little bit. That's, he almost beat me in the corner, but then he moved far. He looked strong. I make it a stick. <laughs> Good job. Oh boy, they're still looking at it, guys, and we're just being told it's no score because of a slap. The free hand touches. I don't think Galerme knows this yet. When we come back, we might get a very different reaction for the former PBR world champion. Still no rise for the Cowboys. The Bulls still dominating. Coming up on the PBR 15-15 bucking battle, Brazilian Agnaldo Cardozo climbs aboard the Bull Bugle 2. Then, Texas young gun Douglas Duncan takes on rock and roll as the PBR rides on from Kansas City, Missouri on CBS. It's been 20 years since the PBR was formed and Kansas City has contributed to plenty memorable moments. None of them would have been possible without the Bulls. And here's JW to dispel a common myth. Well, Craig, it, it is a, it's an urban legend. Everywhere you go in bull riding, people ask, why do you take the flank ropes or the rope that's around the backside? Is it around their testicles? No, it's not. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens. Back here in the back, all it is, it just drops down the far side, goes straight under. I'm going to take a shoot hook, reach through this gap in this fence, go to the other side, pull it straight through. No wraps around anything. Straight up around here. This is a bull that weighs 2,300 pounds. Ties it off, a little old slip knot. Tell Ty, pause the bond, good luck, bear down. 
And Mac, here's here's our freeze. We're taking a look at this, and as, as JW was pointing out, you can clearly see in this picture nowhere near the male parts. Yeah, and you know, Craig, this is this is something these contractors really care about these bulls a great deal. And they're not they're trying to do everything they can to get the best out of them, not hinder them in any sort of way. The Bulls have gotten the best out of each other so far, much better than the Cowboys. There have been a number of events this season where the Bulls have blanked the Riders. Agnaldo Cardozo going to try to change all that here on Rocky Mountain Apple Foundation's Bugle 2. Five straight buck offs for this Bull. Make that six. And J-Dub, that was with conviction. I tell you what, that was an outstanding trip. I'm telling you, Justin, did you see it? I was back here trying to get up on the back of the chute from tying that flank. Yeah, J-Dub, I got to see it. I mean, the bull turned back right in the chute, and it happened so fast, you know, you didn't get to see a whole lot. But a great bull right there just whipped him over his shoulder, you know, and, I mean, they could have closed the gate on him right there. Next up in the chute, Douglas Duncan paired with the bull that strikes fear into the heart of every rider, a bull by the name of Rock and Roll, 24 straight buck offs. The last rider on his back, Jordan Hupp, last week in St. Louis, that only lasted four seconds. And if the bull wasn't enough to deal with, Justin, he's got some hip issues, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got hip issues, you know, and, and it's something that he's got to deal with every day of his life. And, uh, you know, it's something though Douglas has accepted and moved on and, and he's doing everything in his power to ride bulls, but this one right here is not easy. You know, you talked about the street, Craig. In my, my opinion, this is one of the most underrated bulls on tour right now. Well, our eye file just showed you that this bull has bucked off four world champions, four rookies of the year, and a guy who seems to own Vegas, Robson Palermo. This bull is great. Shorty weighed in on that one. That was not Rock and Roll's best trip. No, it wasn't, but that bull, you saw him, he kind of come out here and, and just veered in a circle around to the left. Uh, Douglas's right foot was kind of just bouncing. He never could get a hold with it for some reason. Maybe that has to do with that hip. Uh, and then the bull just kind of hauled out and felt that Douglas wanted down in there. That's how smart these bulls are. That bull just hollowed out. In other words, he kind of stepped wider uh, rather than turning sharp and getting underneath him and let him fall right down to the inside. Shorty brings up a great point. We always should highlight the intelligence of these bulls. It may not have been Rock and Roll's best out, but he does enough. 25 straight buck offs for the bull, and the bulls are dominating. Coming up, last week, Luke Snyder fell victim to the infamous Bushwhacker. He looks to rebound aboard the bull, King Lopez. Then, it's J.B. Mooney versus the Bull altercation as the PBR 15-15 bucking battle continues from Kansas City. All right, folks, we're ready for another Built Ford Tough Clash of the Cowboys challenge. We have developed a little obstacle course here. There are four legs to the course, and each cowboy has to drive a different leg. The fastest time wins. Oh, and one more thing. They have to do it all in reverse using only the backup camera. And they're off. The Outlaws are the first team to go. Rock and roll, Come on, Arn. And he's entered the mud pit. There you go. Okay, switch it. Okay, okay, stop. Good. Stop. Go ahead. Go for it. He seems to be doing really well. All right, reverse, reverse, reverse. And now it's up to Jesse. All right, now this is the bumpy area of the obstacle course. We're good. Go for it, go for it. Okay, you guys can switch. The lone team captain in for the last leg. All right, they're ready to go. Come on, come on. Save out, save out. And good. Next are the bandits. And they're off. Keep the black line in the middle. He is going into that mud pit. Turn, 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 turn. Stop, 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 stop. Well, LJ, the further we go into this Clash of the Cowboys competition, the more creative Ford gets, don't they? 
Yeah, you know, Ford has, has really pulled out a, a, a trick on us. Uh, they're making us use that backup camera, which is a great feature on these trucks. And, uh, you know, every, everybody likes an underdog, so we'll see if y'all can catch us. Well, in this competition, you guys got a good start. How do you feel about the win? I feel good. Uh, let's see if y'all can take it. <laughs> Well, to watch a conclusion, go to ClashOfTheCowboys.com. Also register for a chance to win a trip to the PBR World Finals and a new Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. Stay tuned next weekend for more Clash of the Cowboys. Missouri man Luke Snyder, who only grew up 30 miles from here, gets his rematch chance. This bull, King Lopez, has bumped him off twice. At last year's World Finals, only 2.8 seconds, and in St. Louis last year, at 3 seconds. Written one for his last eight times, guys. This one's a handful. Another rematch here. He's been on him twice. In the show me state, Luke Snyder shows this crowd something. Yeah. How about 91 and a half points? 91 and a half, buddy. Uh, in front of the hometown crowd, how'd that feel? It doesn't get much better than that, Shorty. <laughs> it felt good, man. I gotta ask you, your best friend, Brendan Cox, rode that bull to seven plus seconds uh, a week ago. Did you, did you have a talk with him to get, get an idea of what he felt like? Absolutely, buddy. He called me. We talked it out. As long as I can keep my hand in there, he makes you pump the whole time. But I kept my men in there, and that's all that, that's all that matters. Great bull ride, buddy. Thanks, Shorty. For now. The guys are referring to the fact that Brendan Clark last week had he hung on for one second, would have won in St. Louis. Luke and Brendan, great friends. <laughs> Snyder, the new bad boy mower lead dog. Let's send it on over to Justin, who's with JB Mooney. Thanks, Craig. I appreciate you getting it to me because JB's about to get on right now. JB, we know you had to miss last week with leg injury. How's it feeling? Oh, it's all right. I'm sore, but ain't nothing to complain about. Both night in the 1515. Good luck, buddy. Appreciate it. JB Mooney, who is dealing with that injury to his left fibula, told me earlier today he didn't even want to go get an x-ray because in his mind it didn't matter, Mac, whether or not it was broken. He was gonna get on the whoa, the back of this bull. An altercation. Giving him a little something to think about, isn't he, Mac, before he gets on that back? Yeah, Craig, and that's exactly what JB doesn't need right now. But he's got a, a, a broken bone, the small bone in his leg is what's broken on him. And, you know, he doesn't need to pull roughing him up in the chutes any worse before he gets out of there. And, uh, you know, JB's a guy, he's one of the fastest guys on tour at getting in and out of the chute. And that's really going to work in his favor here tonight. Altercation, seven straight buck-offs. The last was Silvano Alves in Anaheim in the championship round. And going back, J-Dub, to J.B. Mooney and Max Point, J.B. usually likes to nod his head very quickly. And the more he thinks about a ride, it seems the less he's fired up about one sometimes. Well, he's one of those guys that watched all the old school and his heroes, and that's what he wants to be like. He wants to be one of them guys sliding right and get out of there like they, like they used to do it. You know, a lot of guys take their time in there and try to get it exactly right. He's one that doesn't worry about it. He gets out of there fast and save all that momentum and all that energy for when the gate opens. He'll readjust the first jump and keep on going. Justin was a lot of the same way. Get in there and get out of there fast and, uh, and let all that energy turn loose when the gate opens. Hey, Shorty, one of the stats on this bull is it's never been ridden by a left-handed rider, of which Mooney has won. Why is that? You know, that a lot of times these rank bulls for a left-handed rider, they want that guy to the outside. But one thing that J.B. Mooney's great about doing is letting those bulls kind of take his hand away and keeping his hips to the inside, right in the inside of that spin. Uh, that keeps them bulls pretty even a lot of times. Uh, this is a guy that, that that's one of the... I think uh, as a writer, he, he knows the science of the writing a lot more than we give credit to. He, when he takes an interview, he just says, all you got to do is hang on. And that is simply not true. JB has this figured out to a science, guys.
I don't know if you can hear him, guys. He's wincing in pain. That bull's, he's got a broke leg. I mean, he's getting on one that, that weighs, this bull weighs 1,650 pounds, and he just leans over on that broke leg. There ain't nothing between, you know, that pipe and that bull, but, but his leg, you know. So when they lean over there, them bones go to move, and it starts hurting. Straight up, they just gave him an option for a re-ride. Uh, Looks like that's what they're going to do. Well, and, and, and probably right for so. I mean, they need these bulls to stand in there so they can get a fair shot. JB's got a broke leg. He's got to get in there. But all the while, they, they have to give you a, a legitimate fair shot to compete against the other guys. One cowboy has gotten it done. It's the Missouri man, the local favorite, Luke Snyder. 91 and a half points on King Lopez. And like a point guard seeing the whole court, Shorty, you, Frank, and Jesse need to be able to gauge all aspects of the ride, don't you? Yeah, you know, and for me, I got to tell you, uh, nobody ever taught me what to look at, but I just take it as a defensive player in basketball or in football would do. And during the ride, what I'm watching for is the rider's hips. I want to see where his hips are pointed, what they're doing. That tells me, much like a defensive player learns, where the rider's going to go. Now, I don't know the answer to this question. I've never asked these guys, but... What do you guys look at during the ride, Jesse? You know, same sort of deal. I try not to get too caught up in the rider or the bull. I try to look at the whole picture, determine if he's in control and where that bull wants to go. Frank? Yeah, about the same, man. Just try to anticipate where he's going to land. You know, Craig, and one of the hard things while, while bucking these ranked bulls is, is trying not to watch the bull because these are such great athletes. It's easy to lose your focus. Jordan Huff. RFD HD takes care of Huff. In a little over four seconds, Jordan rode this bull back at the World Finals in Las Vegas in 2011. Right here, though, the bull had his number. On paper, J-Dub, this was one of those bulls that it looked like was better suited to some of the riders. Well, it, it kind of drags around there a little bit, a little bit uphill for Jordan, but he just couldn't make it work today. I tell you what, I, I want to go right straight to, to with this new New Holland Power Star, guys. This is a Jeff Robinson bull. I think he's one of the bulls that's in running for the Bucking Bull of the Year. But but Jeff's not here this weekend, and, and he's actually sent the job to Kent Cox. Did he tell you anything about how to flank these bulls? I'm pretty light flanks. Don't take much flanks. Jordan and four. Hey, J Dub, explain that though when you say takes a light flank. Can you explain a little bit about what you mean by line flank? You just don't pull it very tight, like just I said, just a real loose. Game. You just kind of want it to feel about like you, anybody would wear a belt. Correct. Thank you. New Holland Power Star is bucked off 20 straight. Blackjack. I don't know how you want one to buck any harder than that. I, I know Bushwhacker's outstanding and great, but that might be a new guy to look at on the radar. This bull's kicking, he's spinning, he's doing everything he needs to do. Watch him when he leaves the chute. He's kicking, he's already turning. Wow, got the speed, intensity, everything a guy looks for for a great champion bull. 21 straight buck offs for New Holland Power Star, including five former PBR world champions. Aaron Roy adds his name to the list, and our bad boy more lead dog continues to be Luke Snyder. Grew up only 30 miles away from Kansas City, trying to give everyone here in the Sprint Center the most to cheer about. Still to come, two young guns of the PBR. Ty Pazabon takes on Mississippi Hippie. Then Marco Agucci climbs aboard Yellow Jacket Jr. as the PBR rides on from Kansas City. Today's Nikki's pick of the pen is Mississippi Hippie. Now, first of all, you've got to love this bull's name, but as J.W. Hart mentioned earlier, this bull weighs in at a whopping 2,300 pounds. This bull, as you can see, how high his back is in there. Now, this bull doesn't have to do very much to be a really strong bull. He's a little bit long. He'll go either way. We'll say that a lot today, but it's true. These bulls are smart. They feel for the riders. It's not that we don't know what we're talking about, but Mississippi Hippie is a bull that bucks like an 1,800 pound bull, and he's 23. 300 pound bull, a great bull, watch the kick out of here. This is an excellent bull, today's Dickies pick of the pin, Mississippi Hippie. J-Dub, I told Ty Pazabon earlier today that this bull is one and a half hours.
asteroids going off of weight. And he looked at me, he goes, thanks, Craig. That really psychs me up. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I talked to the guy that on the bull out of the pins early this morning. He goes, I just want to correct you. You said he weighed 1,900, 2,000 pounds maybe last week. We weighed him this week, and he was a little bit gannin from the snowstorm and things, and he weighed 23 or 2285, so he said he weighs way over 2300 on a normal day. It's almost as if Pazabon can't even fit in the shoots, Matt. It's impressive to see how much girth and how much size Mississippi hit me at. Yeah, and then to see the athletic ability that he has, Craig, once the gate opens. There's a good look at it right here. Large farm animal here, guys. He's almost taller than the top of the gate. Eleven straight buck offs for this bull. But Pazabon at the moment ranked fourth in the world has been on a hot streak. Okay, guys. After that gate opened, it just became a matter of survival. And J-Dub, credit Ty Pazabon for getting out of there relatively unscathed. I tell you what, this is a bull that's big. Yeah, we just talked about how big he is, but how agile he is on his feet. He hops and he skips and he's just got so much power. When you have when you have that much weight to throw around, you you get real heavy on the end of a guy's arm real quick. Mississippi Hippie now part of the KVRC camp, a recent acquisition that they are very excited about. With Pazabon's buck off, we now transition to one of the better Brazilians on tour, Marco Agushi, sitting third in the world. He's matched up against Yellow Jacket Jr. And Mac, when I spoke with him about this matchup earlier tonight, he goes, oh boy, this is going to be powerful. Yeah, and, and he's exactly right, Craig. This bull can have a lot of hop and skip, go out through there, and he likes to get a rider loosened up before he commits and gets in a spin. This bull's only been ridden one out of his last nine. Sixth year on tour, J-Dub. This bull may have lost a step, but he is still a formidable foe. Yeah, I'm, I'm back here, guys. I, I can't see nothing that's going on. I'm sorry, I'm back here checking out Bushwhacker. He is, I'm in, I'm in the pen back here. I want to come back here and take a look at this bull. Unlike his daddy, his daddy would have been pacing and, and hitting the fence, but you see how calm this bull is? He's just waiting his turn, leaving all his energy for when that gate opens. Like Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. A little rope-a-dope before he gets his chance in a little bit. Agushe finally succumbs to the left-handed spin. Aside from Luke Snyder's score of 91 and a half, that's the longest we've seen a rider sit on the back of a bull in this 15-15 bucking battle. Guys, what did he do right? Well, Craig, that, that's what I was talking about. That bull likes to get a guy loosened up before he ever commits to a spin. And, and that's what he did. He had Marco loosened up. But the thing that always impresses me about Marco is that he never panics. He stays loose. He keeps trying to get to the front end. And that's why he lasted as long as he did, Craig. Hey guys, keep in mind that last weekend Luke Snyder, our Bad Boy Motor lead dog, faced Bushwhacker in his last ride in St. Louis. After being on the back of Bushwhacker, everything else is a walk in the park. He's our leader here in Kansas City. Coming up on the PBR 1515 Bucking Battle, two cowboys fighting for the world number one ranking. Back-to-back -back champion Silvano Alves takes on the toughness of SmackDown. Then it's Shane Proctor versus Houdat as the PBR rides on from Kansas City on CBS. Everyone always talks about Bushwhacker and Asteroid, but the bull that is nipping at their heels, SmackDown, the third best average score of all the bulls on the PBR circuit. You see what he's been able to do in terms of rides and outs, a little bit more favorable if you're on his back. But J-Dub, SmackDown is never gonna make it easy. No, he's not gonna make it easy. And you, you can almost bet that the guys that's made the whistle on him have been left-handed. 
this being Silvano, you know, with his right hand down, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, Justin, but I'm looking for the bull to win this one. Well, I understand exactly what you're saying, but I can never go against the first ever back-to-back -back two time world champion of the PBR. This, this guy, that's what that's what I think has made him the first ever back-to-back -back champion, is his ability to ride bulls and spin either direction. Straight up. And you're wrong, and you know it, and you're wrong. <laughs> you're just you know, you benching because you don't want to agree with me. Shorty, you're staying out of this one, aren't you? No, I'm going to get right in. <laughs> I want to talk about something that JW had actually talked about last week, and that was Bull rolling their shoulders. This Bull, he's going to be around to the left, right in the gate. Okay, that's going to be away from his hand. This Bull's back is built like this a little bit, like the roof on a house. And when this Bull turns back, he'll roll that outside shoulder to the outside. That's going to want to pull Solano out there. I think he knows that. He's probably going to try to stay in there, but I don't know if it can work. I don't like betting against either one of these guys right here, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with Solano on this one. Just getting word, gentlemen. A sellout crowd here in the Sprint Center. 12 and a half thousand in attendance. And this roof may get blown off if Luke Snyder hangs on for the win. But this is our eye file on Silvano Alves. The first time ever two-time defending PBR World Champion. You see that ride percentage astronomical. And closing in on three and a half million in earnings. Go! Craig, but uh, huh. that Shorty Gorm and uh, Justin McBride ain't very good at making the matchups, are they? <laughs> well, Dub, talk about this for a little bit. You got to give Silvano Alves credit. The Bull did what he wanted to do. Was Alves was able to make a slight correction to extend this ride a little bit longer? Exactly. You watch right about here. He's gonna. The Bull hesitates, picks his inside leg up. Silvano does and moves it, adjusts it, makes the right adjustment. But the Bull adjusts to him right after that and give him a little stutter step and then brings it again. And when that timing changed, he just got out of time with him, gets that arm straight. That Bull's smart, guys. And I, I don't know that I, I can't right off the top of my head remember a right-handed guy making the whistle on him. Alves is trying to retake that number one position in the world from Shane Proctor, who will ride after his brother-in-law right here. This is J.B. Mooney on Wolverine Construction's Ringo. Comes from Cody Ole and Daniel Crisp. Ringo's a bull. J-Dub again that doesn't have a ton of outs on the Build for Tough series, only five, but every time we've seen him, he seems to get better. Yeah, I seen this bull early in the season at a Turing Pro Bull ride in Kearney, Nebraska, and he really leaped high in there, broke over really good for J.B. Stout, and went back. It lasted six seconds. If that bull had stayed going left, Mac, do you think he would have ridden him? Well, I think so, Craig. He was in really good position when the bull turned back into his hand. But again, we talked about when you get into these 15-15 bucking battles, it's the best bulls in the world, and they're very smart. They feel like a guy's got them rode one direction. They're going to change things up. That's exactly what that bull just did. Ringo didn't need the rest of the Beatles to help him out. J.B. Mooney off his back at six. And for JB, it's more about the landing these days than it is the ride with that possible broken left fibula that he refuses to get x-rayed. He'll be back, however, in Kansas City. We go to his brother-in-law, Shane Proctor, our number one rider in the world. One of the reasons he is holding that spot is because he's the only two-time winner this season. He won in Winston-Salem, and then a couple weeks ago in Anaheim. Here he's matched up against Kudat, and J-Dub, this is a rematch. Yeah, this is a really good bull. Going to have a little forward motion to him. A lot of guys think this might be the championship or the champion ride tonight, because he's going to move out of there good. He's going to be away from his hand. Shane Proctor keeps that free arm down. He could get good. You heard Shorty say he was getting a little behind. Dub, he did it exactly what you wanted him to do, which is keep that free arm down. You watch right, right here on the replay. You watch when he leaves here. He's got that elbow down just the way he's been practicing, the way he's been meditating to keep it down, doing good. He just gets a little bit behind, slides him back off that rope. And when it does, it gets that riding arm straight and it puts all the pressure on him to pull him to that outside and he couldn't adjust fast enough. It's a hat trick for Houdat, the third time that bull has bucked off Shane Proctor. And when we return, 
The Bad Boy Laura lead dog is Luke Snyder right now, but it could become Mike Lee because the Monster Energy Money Bowl with 57,000 on the line, Bushwhacker against Lee. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the PBR 1515 Bucking Battle, is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. Follow the clash of the Cowboys to see how to win one. Super 8. Free breakfast and free internet access. Super 8. Destination Super. And by the off-road rated Kawasaki Terex 4. Later tonight on CBS Sports Network at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to wrap up our Kansas City weekend. Then next weekend, both CBS Sports Network and CBS factor into the mix. It's Iron Cowboy 4, an interesting twist to this year's Iron Cowboy. Hey. Douglas Duncan is going to train Rowdy, the Dallas Cowboys mascot guys, to ride possibly $5,000 going to charity. And speaking of Iron Cowboy, we're going to kick off our own version of March Madness right here on CBS. The Monster Energy Money Bowl matchup today is $57,000 on the line for Mike Lee, the 2004 PBR World Champion, has met up with Bush Wacker before it went the Bulls' way. And it seems, Shorty, at the moment, no one can stop Bush Wacker. No, this is one of the best bulls that we've maybe seen in, in our entire lifetime. And the reason is, this bull really feels for the rider. Mike's a left-handed guy. This bull likes to go to the left. He's ranker to the left. But sometimes when this bull feels like he needs to go to the right, that's what he'll do. That's going to be the best trip for Mike Lee to ride him. If he can get it done, the bull gets stronger as he goes, though. Going to the left, look for some spectacular stuff. But I expect Bushwhacker to win. And I think JW probably does, too. What do you think, JW? Uh, Shorty, I sure do. And I'm going to tell you what, what I think could happen here when this bull bushwhacker has the ultimate you know ability to get control of a guy's upper body and his free arm and when he does he's going to kick out of there real high and he's going to get the get back lean back get the free, control of that free arm and then when he does and if he does go left like he does like he can and he doesn't go right i don't have a helmet on back here but he could make his helmet go on sideways oh, J-Dub, I agree with everything you just said. But I think the key for Mike Lee here is this bull has, you know, when he comes up in the front end, he gets really high. And Mike Lee's got to stay going with him. He's got to stay broke at the hips for a long time. You cannot meet the kick too early on Bushwhacker. You've got to stay going forward with him for as long as he's doing it. When he finally does break, that's when you meet the kick. When guys set up too early is when they get in trouble. If Mike Lee can stay down, I give him a shot here. And you know as well as I do, when them bulls come up that high in the front, it's hard to hold what you might call a post position that long, especially as big as he is. It might be different if a bull weighs 1,300, but a bull that weighs 1,750 pounds like this one does, it gets very, very difficult. And he's not just going to be up and down and underneath himself, J-Dub. This bull takes long oh, jumps. Long forward movement, and, and you don't know which way he's going, so you can't set a trap for him. Hey, hey, bushwhack! Mike push, push, Lee push. just got bushwhacked. Come on out when you come. That lasts a little over three seconds. J-Dub, you mentioned the helmet and Bushwhacker delivered on your promise. He gave him a nice little pop to the head, something to take home and remember him by. Well, when you know guys riding styles and you know how a bull bucks, you, can almost, you can't foresee the future, but you know the capabilities are there. And lucky his helmet's still on straight. Mac, look at this bull score, 48 points. Keep in mind, right, that 50 is perfection. Yeah, and you know, we've seen this now back to back. Last week we saw Bushwhacker get a 47 and a 48 this week. He could have been 49 then last week with the trip he had. This bull is outstanding and he's on a mission to win another world title, Craig. The 2011 world champion Bucking Bull. He lost a close, he lost a close match to Asteroid last year. Mike Absolutely blown away here in Kansas City. The Missouri man, the favorite, Luke Snyder, is the winner of the 15-15 bucking battle here in Kansas City. The Kawasaki great moment of the day brought to you by the Kawasaki Terex 4 is Luke Snyder, guys, aboard King Lopez. Lopez went into his hand to the right. Luke Snyder was more than along for the ride able to maintain that position. 
the accolades and the big check are going to the man who grew up 30 miles from here in Raymore, Missouri. We take a look at our world standings after this 15-15 bucking battle. Shane Proctor still protects that narrow lead over two-time defending PBR world champion Silvano Alves. Then it's Canadian Ty Pazabon well placed in third, as well as Canadian Aaron Roy in fifth. Thanks for watching the Pure PBR 15 versus 15 from Kansas City. Join us later on CBS Sports Network for more bull riding and we'll crown our event champion here in Kansas City. Up next, great college basketball action coming your way for Justin McBride, J.W. Hart, and Shorty Gorham. I'm Craig Hummer. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports in association with the professional Bull Riders Incorporated.